Hi, aficionados! How are you? And welcome to the World Life Tour. I, I was remembering a few minutes ago that in the in the last life, the life with uh, hands, uh, normally I prepare the intro for these uh, English lives for a few days. Um, different from Portuguese lives, I need to prepare myself <laughs> a little bit longer. So I started the last life. Uh, I was prepared uh, and I talked, 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 but <laughs> I forgot to turn on the sound and uh, <laughs> nobody listened to me. <laughs> rookie mistake, rookie failure. <laughs> so I'm sorry for that, but we must go on, right? Well, uh, we continue the journey of this um, World Life Tour. We crossed the Atlantic Ocean once again. Uh, from Germany to Canada to to meet with uh, the special guest for today. Another special guest, or best saying, an iconic guest, <laughs> well known from all of you, um, from before these uh, lives, for his uh, videos that I liked a lot. Uh, uh, our guest, uh, he's uh, very natural uh, <laughs> doing uh, those uh, lives and videos. And we learn a lot with him. Well, before we introduce uh, our special guest, Aqua Malik, <laughs> I want to, to thank uh, a special brand, a special brand that is tropical, that is in my heart. Uh, they has been supporting the Paris Upleco project for some time. Uh, so uh, I, I need to, to count on you to, to <laughs> subscribing this YouTube channel and later to follow us on the Facebook, on the Instagram uh, of the Paraiso Pleco project. I, I need you. <laughs> well, let's call Aqua Malik, uh, our iconic, our great guest for today. Well, let's call him. What's going yeah. on? Yeah, hey, Malik. <laughs> How, are How are you? I'm well, good. I'm going to get my headset actually because. Ah, uh, okay, okay, yeah, of course. Because uh, I remember we had that issue earlier and I forgot. Yes, 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 of course. Run through real quickly. How's everybody doing? Hope everybody's having a great Saturday. Yep, yep. It's, it's better now. It's better now with us here. 
<laughs> Malik, thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, for me, it's a, it's a great honor and a great pleasure to, to have you here. And um, there we I'm a big fan of you, of your work. I follow you a lot, um, a long time ago. So, Thank you so much. And yes, <laughs> I, I mean, fish people had to stick together, yes? Yes, yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, uh, I'm not believing that I'm, I'm speaking here with us. You are, <laughs> <laughs> you are uh, a great, iconic uh, uh, person in the aquarium hobby. So. Thank you so much. Just thank you, thank you. Guy. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. It's what you say, yes? <laughs> In your life. Yes. yes. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Malik, thank you once again. We will uh, talk about uh, fish rooms, how to manage uh, fish rooms. I know that you uh, have a great fish room. Not a fish room, it's a fish house, yes? <laughs> Could you tell you the tour. Yeah, yeah, we will like it. Could you tell us um, a little bit about you, about how how the how it started, how you came to this uh, hobby? Yeah. Um, so yeah, definitely. Um, I started keeping fish as a kid. Um, yeah. My parents had aquariums, so naturally. Uh, my father had uh, larger aquariums in the house, and I wanted to get involved. I wanted to put my hands in there. I loved water and the fish, and it was mesmerizing, you know. And uh, so seeing, like, some of the fish that they had, like larger angelfish or severums or oscars or even discus or anything like that, I was very captivated. And my father did not want me touching, I was going on Zebra Flaco fans. Uh, touching any of his tanks because he was very particular. He, those were his prized possessions, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's going on? Uh, <laughs> a lot of a lot of people. <laughs> yes. Um, so, what's going on? No, what's going on? What's going on? Olivia and Dad's fish room. Okay. So okay, anyway, no, he, like, he he yeah. didn't uh, want me touching his tanks. So he said, you know, I don't want you near my tanks because you don't know what you're doing. I was three, four years old. So he okay. got me my first aquarium on my third birthday and I started from there and uh, started, you know, keeping guppies and mollies and sword tails. I remember uh, breeding sword tails when I was like four years old. They were breeding on their own and I was getting babies. So I was very proud of them. And uh, I started there and then started having extra fish. Didn't know what to do with it. Took it to the pet store, got some more fish, more tanks and just grew from there. And uh, I've always had an aquarium or usually more than one no, my yes, whole yes. life. Yeah. It's, a, <laughs> it's that uh, what I, I, I want to, to ask you, if you started only with that one or well, we, with a lot? Oh, no, no, I started only um, with one. Yep. Only with uh, one yeah. initially. And then uh, it became two. Even when I started back in Canada, because we moved to Canada when I was 14, and I got my first aquarium, I think, in Canada when I was 15, so the next year. And it was just one aquarium. Actually, it's this aquarium right here. I'll show you guys. I'm actually sitting in front of it. So um, this aquarium here that you're seeing um, at the bottom of the stairs, this 55-gallon, this guy. Was it my was first your aquarium. first? Oh, wow. In Canada. So... Okay. And then uh, I started breeding fish in that one here. And uh, I started getting uh, German rams or so Ramarazi cichlids. And uh, so, yeah, it just kept growing. And the fish just naturally seemed to breed. And I don't know what to do with the babies. So I just take them back to the pet store and they give me more tanks. <laughs> That's essentially <laughs> how this worked for me. <laughs> well, Malik. Before we started to, to talk about how to manage, how, how you manage your fish room and mm -hmm. some tips that you could give to us, um, could you give us a tour of your uh, fish room, fish house? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I can give you, could you show a us a quick, quick tour. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, quick tour. Um, so, this is the basement. Uh, we mostly have discus down here, but we do have other fish also. Uh, a lot of our breeding pairs are down here. Uh, so these are okay. some wild caught discus. Um, 
There's another pair. Very, Very nice, nice. Wildcard yeah. pair. Very uh, nice. It's another tank bread pair. Um, so the water levels are down right now because they are breeding. So when they, when no. they breed, we try to keep the water levels down. And uh, these tanks are all on RO water. So it will stay on the tank if it's on RO. And uh, it's another breeding pair. A really nice breeding pair. We have eggs on this in this tank. Uh, I was laid last night, so very excited for those. Um, so we write right on the tank what needs to happen because it's easier that way. Um, and this is from a permanent mark, not a permanent, uh, uh, like a wipeable marker. So this you write it, and then it's easy to remove. You just wipe it off after. And then there's also eggs in this tank, in the in the plate in the back. Um, some babies were growing out. Um, more babies growing out. Nice. We have electric blue rams. Yes, yes. Yeah, beautiful. Nice. Thank you. Uh, some more discus. Uh, black ram resi. They're very mean. <laughs> These ones <laughs> are very aggressive. Um, gold ram resis. And we have some more discus in here, uh, more discus. So pretty much all these tanks are discus grower tanks down here. Um, and don't mind the mess. There's a big box of garbage that needs to go out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <see. laughs> so oh, we have uh, more ramirazes, uh, some more discus. This, these ones are really nice like maybe six months old now seven months no, okay. not seven, six months and then four or five months old these are like two months old and more ramirazes in there and then we have a turtle uh this is our turtle bob <laughs> he is uh Sleep. He's sleeping. Yeah, he's sleeping. He just woke up. He does not like me at all. Yeah. He does not like me. And then we have uh, more angel Whoa. fish grower. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of angel fish. You, you yeah. will be surprised. And uh, they, they're one of our most uh, profitable fish. Definitely makes a lot of money and uh, helps pay for this place. Uh, this it's is our tank repair area. So we're repairing okay. old tanks that need to get repaired. Okay. Uh, silicone. So like I just did this one here. So you see the glue. Okay. Like okay. Inside, you know. So like all this work happens in there. Um, and then we'll go upstairs. So that's the basement. There is, uh, I think, eighteen or nineteen big tanks down here, uh, in okay. total. Um, in, only in the basement. How many anyway, aquariums you have in the in the house? The house right now has a little over hundred tanks. Wow! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy, and it's not all set up like so. It's like, um, like, like I'm not counting these tanks that are in the okay. middle of the room. These are these haven't been set up yet, so the, I'm not counting those. It's only the stuff that's on racks is over hundred. So this is one of our racks. I have some breeding pairs of uh, discus. So awesome. this is on the main floor. And uh, baby discus, maybe about six weeks old. And some apitanos. And these fish I bred myself. Wow. And uh, some cichlids that were bred here. to get them to the front they're running it's a big spawn these guys are very prolific so we have one breeding pair uh they're uh, a firemouth type cichlid called the thorictus maculopinus and a very nice fish very easy to breed with some empty tanks that are fish are coming today to these tanks okay. uh, we have a, a second facility uh called the nursery so it's at uh uh, my fish room partner's house, uh, his name is Michael. And uh, so he has 60 tanks at his house, uh, maybe a little bit more. And uh, then the rest of the tanks 
are here. So let me turn the lights on. You go. don't you don't do this at full time. You have a other I, I full time a, job. Yes. Oh yes, I have a full time <laughs> job. I I work seventy hours a week, give or take. Okay. Uh, Sixty to seventy hours, sometimes more. In the summertime, it's more. Uh, got some shrimp tanks. And so they're not the best condition because we just set these up. We've got some okay. more angels, grouse, uh, some guppies, and uh, some green water. There's some plecos in here, but we can kind of see them. Whoa, <laughs> and sisters. <laughs> yeah, yes. all, everywhere is fish, and then uh, some, <laughs> some angels. And more angels. We have al already angels. some some questions here. Okay, uh, yeah, you can ask. As a Portuguese friend, what kind okay. of filtration do you use? We saw oh, Duarte, I, I know him. Uh, you yeah, know? we are using. <laughs> I know him. I know him. We are using mostly sponge filters. Um, okay. These two tanks here are run on under gravel filters. Um, okay. So it's a sand bed, not sand, but gravel bed with the filter right there under gravel. Okay, okay, okay. Um, it's one of my favorite filters. It works really well. So these tanks probably been up and running for 10 years now with the same filters. I didn't have to do anything. I just, when I moved, I put water and started again. Okay. You don't have any external filter or, or no, other no. like sump or something like no, that? No, 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 too no. Much. no. No, everything okay. in our house is run on uh, sponge filters okay. or, or Hamburg matten filters. Yeah, right yeah. Here. And then we have these two undergravel filters here um, set up. And then I have more undergravel filters, but I haven't set them up yet. Uh, okay. But, you know, and uh, so and this the, tank has to move out of here. And with the, with the discus, you yes, have same the, the same, only, only sponge filters? Yes. Okay. I mean, we have external filters like this tank, for example, has a, uh, one of these uh, hang on the back filters, but it's not even working right now. It's clogged up, you know? It's all okay. only sponges that work. Oh, big and, sponge. uh, <laughs> big sponges. Yeah, this yes, one I really yes, like. Yes. <laughs> so, and then I have more, more angel fish growing out there yeah. and so much more in here it's, it's everywhere it's everywhere well, fish Angel everywhere fish. <laughs> yeah yes so so these are uh the, the living room that's my dog <laughs> okay <laughs> they show up in your life sometimes yes yes oh yeah uh, she wants to be a part of it she probably heard the camera and she's like oh live stream i want to be a part of it <laughs> He's a so, part of the team. Yes. So, I have, yeah, Malik, uh, how yeah. many how many time you spent in your in your fish room? How many More than hours I would like. <laughs> <laughs> More than I would like. Um, you, at you this moment, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. You do, you don't need to 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 sleep. Sometimes I I I see your lives. You three a.m. three <laughs> two a.m. Well, yes, you are always uh, wake because up. my work is uh, is very uh, sporadic timing. Like uh, I don't have okay. set times to work. Every day is yeah, different. Okay. Some days it's longer. Some days it's uh, you know ten hours. Some days it's fifteen hours. So um, when I come home, there's so much work that needs to get done before I leave the next day. So okay. I, if I have to do it, I just uh, say okay today and. Uh, get it done in a few hours and go. But uh, in terms of time, how long do I spend in the house cleaning and feeding? Because I, I don't count time, I just look at the fish as time spent yeah, in the fish yeah. room. Um, in terms of feeding, it takes me half an hour every morning to about 40 minutes or so. So I like to give myself 40 minutes, but I can feed the whole house in half an hour. Um, so you are with some, sorry, sorry, Malik, you are with some problems with the network. Are you, oh, with can you, yeah. Okay. How about now? Is it good? 
Uh, Maybe it's better. It's, it's better. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 It's better. We'll go downstairs. Yeah. It's because the the Wi-Fi doesn't work so well upstairs on the third ah, floor. Okay, okay. Oh, now, now it's yeah, better. Yeah. It's better now. Okay. Much so better. Much better. I I spend about uh, half an hour in the morning feeding. This is my dog. Um, <laughs> and uh, then uh, Michael, who is Fish Easy on YouTube, if you guys are following him. Yeah, yes, Fish follow Easy, him. yeah. Yeah, and so he comes around five o'clock in the afternoon every day, um, especially if I'm working because he gets off work around that time. And then he feeds most of the fish. Uh, what's going on, Ozzy? Uh, thanks. Five. <laughs> And uh, at night, when I come home from work, I do one time night feeding. Okay. And that one, I spend about 40, 45 minutes or so uh, going at every tank, looking at them, making sure everybody's eating. And if there's any issues on top of the feeding, then I take care of it at that time at night. Yeah. Um, and water changes wise. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's a question here from Miguel. I think Miguel is from Portugal. <laughs> yeah. I talk. <laughs> <laughs> they're not the like, hi Miguel they're not uh, automatic uh, not yet at least uh, the tanks in the basement are drilled um, but we have not set up the the top piping work for it we just moved here like eight months ago and I've been working every day since we moved here and then Michael's also been working every day okay. uh, he's an engineer actually so he works 60 hours a week give or take um, and uh, then he also has a family and you know so he has to take care of that yeah <laughs> so, so it's a full-time on top of having full-time commitments outside of this uh, at least for me it's just taking care of the dog you know my girlfriend's not too demanding uh, so i don't have to spend a whole bunch of time you know catering to her so it's it's a little bit better for me but again like that could change as time passes where she might want to spend more time and want to be here which would be a problem <laughs> um but yeah like in terms of water changes we do everything manually um i like to call it semi-automatic okay uh, so yeah it's, it's kind of automatic <laughs> not automatic <laughs> at all. um so behind me you see water storage uh okay so these things are going to be placed throughout the house right now it's just sitting there uh because we haven't set it up properly but those contain this one behind me contains RO and then the black one contains yeah, okay. water. Um, and so any tank that needs RO, there's pumps in these containers and then you just yeah. pump water out of it. Um, in terms of taking the water out, we have uh, like a really long pool hose that attaches to almost like a siphon and uh, we use that to remove water from the tanks. And so it's, it's very manual. Uh, removing of the water and it does take some time um, okay. I can do the whole house water changes in about 12 to 14 hours <laughs> the whole house okay. um, so if I'm working five days a week uh, usually Saturday I do the water changes I start Saturday morning and I'm still doing water changes Sunday until I go to bed <laughs> yeah so so that's the perfect weekend, weekend. The perfect, perfect weekend. weekend. <laughs> um, and then during the week, Michael does uh, the basement and some of the living room tanks. After work, when he comes over, he'll you know try to touch them up, uh, do some water changes there. So yeah. some of the tanks with a lot of fish gets like once a day water changes, but uh, some of the tanks get every other day, every third day. Some some tanks get once a week. You know. Okay. Well, great commitment with the uh, the fish room. <laughs> Well, yes. <laughs> you talked, yeah. You talked about uh, the feeding, but uh, let's answer this, uh, Ricardo. Okay, so, Ricardo, yeah. hi. Uh, yeah. How do you organize in terms of feeding the animals? Ah. No, we have various types of food, so it's a little confusing uh, to explain this to, like, because I've been in a situation where I had to explain to somebody else to feed my tanks. And it, it doesn't work out because each tank requires a specific kind of food at a specific amount. So um, for, for some of the tanks here, for example, in the basement, Michael feeds them also. But um, he doesn't feed as much as I do because he's, um, he feeds a little less. So okay. um, because he doesn't, he does, he's not here all day, right? So for me, I know exactly how much food each tank can eat 
from like doing observation, for example. Um, I'll give you a, a little example here. Okay, so these guys see. have not eaten all the food. Okay, right? okay. This is from this morning. So I'm reducing the food for these guys because I see this. But so, you um, you clean when you saw this uh, the food oh, in yes. the, the bottom you clean? Or now you, after no. after this live stream I will clean. Ah yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um in terms of feeding, we feed so to answer the question, yeah, we have four types of food. Uh, or five types of food that we feed. Uh, we feed the discus food, B50. Uh, okay. This is the, the red granulates. So it's this from, food is- From tropical, yes? Yes, yes, uh, yes. You have the tropical, uh, <laughs> um, sub, uh, what do you call that one? Uh, sponsorship. Yes, okay. so we feed a lot of this one. Uh, all the discus eat this one, um, the bigger ones. And then we also feed the discus food, the uh, grand champion for our breeding pairs. Okay. So those are uh, for the adult discus. Uh, and then also we feed the tetratropical okay. color granulates for the adult discus. And we also feed um, bug bites for the adult discus. Okay, okay. from flow so, so, okay. Yeah, flu wall. So these yeah. four food is for all the adult discus. Um, and for the adult angels, all the the food, so the bug bites, the D D50, and the tropical tetragranules are all also fed to the angels, but we don't feed the grand champion discus food to the angels. So that's the only okay. difference that the angels get. So that's the adult fish. The baby fish are usually on Dr. Basilier. So it's okay. very easy to feed the babies. Everybody gets the same thing, Dr. Basilier. Yes. Um, and uh, they all eat the Dr. Basilier until they get to um, this size. So once they get to about oh, that okay. size, then they then we start feeding them uh, oh, the, the tropical, uh, uh, okay. the, the discus D50. This size. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so yeah, it's very nice. easy to feed. Um, and then, so that's pretty much every fish in the house. The placos in the house usually are eating Dr. Basilier. Uh, okay. So the zebra placos, the L236. Um, any placo we have usually eats Dr. Basilier. Uh, they also eat a little bit of the discus B50. Um, okay. And they eat a little bit of the bug bites. And uh, they are, the only different food that they get that the, the discus and the angels don't get are uh, the Ebo aquaristic. Uh, okay, I know it. Yep. Yes. Yeah. So that one I feed to the placos, but the discus and the angels don't get that one. So, okay. There's a little bit of variation there, but usually um, if you were to walk in here, like if I were to tell somebody to feed everybody, I wouldn't tell them to feed the adult fish. Uh, they will only be feeding the babies and they will all get uh, Dr. Bassett there. Okay, okay, nice. Yeah. yeah. Craig and Olivia, we have a, an answer, hi. <laughs> okay, so this what is a very you, good, uh, in, yeah. yeah. Hi, Craig, um, yeah. very important question actually, so. Um, Moisture and humidity are a huge battle for us. So we have these humidity monitors throughout the house. In this right here is 52% humidity. Uh, if you go around here, it's 45% humidity. Okay. Um, so these are throughout the whole house, I have these humidity monitors and it, it tells me exactly what the humidity is in the house, in, in that area. Uh, the main thing I think uh, people need to realize is he, as far as humidity goes, if you close your tanks, it's going to make a difference. So down here, just because all the tanks are closed, there's a lot of humidity uh, not being built up. You can see the okay. water just collects yeah. on the glass, right? Um, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And so then we have the lids. Uh, we have the humidity monitor throughout the house, like all throughout the house, everywhere. Um, by every window, I have one of those little humidity monitors. And then I also have a dehumidifier upstairs running 24 hours a day, uh, sucking out the moisture from the atmosphere, keeping it below 50%. So um, we have a commercial dehumidifier. Uh, it runs 24 hours a day and uh, it takes out any moisture above 45%. Uh, into a reservoir, which I had to empty like three times a day. <laughs> so, 
uh, it's a lot of work to 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 keep on top yeah. of the humidity. Um, but I find that because um, mold and, and stuff like that is a big problem in Canada, uh, if the humidity gets above 50, 60 percent, then you can uh, have mold issues. And that's not healthy for yourself or the fish yeah, or your yeah. animals. So, yeah. so it's something I stay quite on top of because I don't want to have uh, lung infections because of my fish keeping hobby. <laughs> Yep, yep, of course. Yeah. So, Malik, uh, yes. Do you have any preference in, on fish? Do some species that you like more to breed or some, I personally some like, challenges? Yeah. Uh, so the, the, the real problem for us is that we we have a full time jobs, we me okay. and Michael both. So um it's it's a little bit of a challenge to breed animals that require um, us to be there 24 seven, like every second of the day. Like, you know, if I had to watch them for six hours, I can't do that. So everything we keep and breed are easy fish. So okay. it's fish that like, for example, the discus, we really like them because we don't have to worry about feeding the babies when they're first born. The, the parents will do all that. Yeah right so it's easier that way the angel fish they take care of their own babies uh, so it's quite easy that way um, the rams does require a little bit of work but michael likes to raise the babies himself so that works out quite well there uh, and the placos also again quite easy uh, zebra placos and yeah yeah hype ancestors the ancestors there they you just have to feed them once a day do your water change once a week um the the dad takes care of the eggs. So uh, preference wise, things that are easier to take care of, like I would rather breed Placos over like some expensive Tetra. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because Tetras yeah. require a little bit more. Yes, yes, yes. The fry are very, very little. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, so, yes. My, my yeah. yes. Yeah. Michael works with that a little bit. He breeds uh, Daniels and uh, some yeah. other cool stuff, but I personally, um, I have some some of these fish, but I, I don't have the, the time to dedicate to breeding them. So anything easy is, is what we like to do. Okay. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. We have here another question. Do you sell your fish direct to fish person or to stores? How you, uh, you, sell, so, you have problems from time to time? Uh, How is it in biggest... Canada? The biggest challenge I personally have, I think Michael has the same challenge, is the time. So we don't necessarily have time to meet with people. Um, okay. I mean, if somebody wants to come and pick up a couple of fish on the weekends, I definitely do sell to local people that, that want to buy from us. I'm, I'm not going to okay. say no money. But... Um, Normally it's, it's to stores, yes? Yes. Okay. yes. Most, most of our fish end up in the bigger stores here in Toronto. Uh, we are quite lucky in Toronto because it's a big city and we have uh, maybe 15 pet stores that sell fish okay. in the city, maybe more, actually more than 50. Uh, and then we supply to almost all of those stores. And anytime I find a new store, I go there right away and I say, hey, I'm Aquamalik, I supply to all your uh, competition, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you should buy from us and we give them some free fish to test out. And then two weeks later, we get a phone call. It's like, oh, you have more, you know. <laughs> so um, yeah. the downside is you sell them uh, fish for a lot cheaper than you would to the customers. So um, you're not going to make all the profit that you could. But again, the time is a factor. So, you know, I, I don't mind yeah. letting them making profit. I want them to stay in business, you know. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. What, uh, Malik? What what kind of um, placos are you keeping now? Um, Greg, I are saying you have, <laughs> you love. Oh, you want to see? Oh, oh, you know what? Yeah, I want yeah. to show him. I, I I have some fish. I, I haven't <laughs> shown him in a while because Craig is uh, <laughs> friends with me on Facebook also. But yeah, we also yeah. have a group. But uh, here, there's some 199s in there. Oh. I don't know if you can see them. Yep, yep, yep. Whoa. Are you breathing them? Yes. Yep. Yes. Well, These are babies from last year. Ah, okay, okay. Kept. I really like them. Uh, they're one of my favorites. Uh, I like the color on them, and uh, 
I like uh, how they act, you know, I, and I also like the fact that they're not too difficult um, compared to other types of Plecos. Um, the high pencestrous seems to be uh, very easy to, to take care of and breed. Yeah. What's going on, uh, uh, Casa dos Distas? Yes, it's a, a local store in Portugal. Oh, nice. a, friend, a, a great friend of mine. Very nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so we have, yeah. uh, in terms of plecos, we have several high ancestors types. So we have the L199, uh, we have the we have the L401. I have some babies from those ones. Uh, we have the L236 uh, Super White. Uh, they're still small, they're about this big, okay. so there's nothing going on there yet. Uh, we have zebra plecos, the L46. We have L280, um, which is the microacanthicus. They're small. Yep, 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 yep. Um, we have uh, what else do we have? We have L56, uh, Peri ancestors. So they're yeah, very nice yeah. fish. I really like them. I bred them already. Uh, there's a few others, and then I want to get. Do you have to have bred the the f um, 56? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Twice wow. now. Yeah. Yeah. But the babies are all brown. They're not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but your your adults are yellow or no? My adults are not yellow yet. No, they're, okay, they're also okay. still small. But they're turning. Some of them have spots now, like on the body. But they're not yellow. They're still brown fish. But okay. I like them. They're pretty fish. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, yeah. Fun to keep. And uh, we have some uh, ancestors red, and uh, some lemon blue eyed ancestors short fin. Okay. So we breed those and uh, we breed uh, um, red lizards. So, uh, okay, Duarte is oh, asking. I think you don't have no, I don't anymore. have the LA to yeah, no. yeah, yeah. I only kept them for about three weeks because they were so big. And at yeah, the time, yeah. the biggest tank I had was uh, 160 liters. So, to keep uh, a fish that is maybe eight, nine inches is yeah. a 160 liter tank, it was not good for them. So I sold it to my friend um, uh, who ended up having to sell them to somebody else because his tank was too small also. And so the person that got them, we don't know if they if the person bred them yet or or not. But I mean, if they have, I will see babies soon. So I'm expecting yeah. hopefully somebody will breed them. Um, but now that we have this place, I want to get some bigger ones and then yeah. try again. You know? I saw I saw the video when you receive it. I saw you receive some some big ones and uh, they were very big, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And they were not cheap those fish, and uh, so it's it's a very beautiful fish. So I personally think they're one of my favorite uh, playco types. Yeah. But they're very very large and uh, and they bite. They yeah. Bite. Oh yeah, they bite. <laughs> it's like they the bite, vampire yeah. vampire plecos, like Le Yeah, very similar. Fish. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> I got bitten a couple of times trying to move them around, <laughs> and it hurts. So they, they yeah. have uh, their teeth are like rabbits, yeah. you know. So it's yes, kind of like yes, two hooks right. on the top, two hooks on the bottom. Yeah, well, it's not a pleasant <laughs> experience. So uh, it's it's good to use gloves if you're handling yeah. those or leprechanticus, you know, anything like that. Yeah. It's good to use gloves. Yeah. I'm, I'm crazy though. I don't use gloves. <laughs> yeah. Malik, what what's your biggest challenges you you see in the in the near future from manage your fish room? What is your for me the one of the bigger challenges is time, uh, okay. just trying to make time um, to 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 dedicate to this, and also you know because I I, I do have a job and you know yeah. I try to have a life outside of this also. Yeah. Um, it's very difficult to, to have like friends and uh, want to do things. Like yesterday, my friend called me, he wanted to go somewhere and I said, I really want to, it's my day off, but I can't because I have yeah. clean aquariums because I have this live stream today <laughs> yeah. and yeah. I can't clean aquariums on Saturday. And uh, so now Friday, I spent all day cleaning aquariums. Yeah. Um, and then also my fish club is having a, a meeting on Wednesday. So I have to record a video tour after this for the okay. fish club. So today was okay. kind of okay. going to be dedicated to videos and things like this. So okay. uh, I did yesterday water changes, which meant I didn't have time to hang out with my friend. He seemed very sad when I told him I didn't have time because 
he was like, oh, I have a day off. Let's go. Let's go to pet stores. Let's do something. I said, I can't, buddy. I want to, but <laughs> it's difficult. <laughs> it's and difficult. you don't have vacations. You don't have vacations. No, no, no. Because, uh, well, when I have vacation, I take the vacation and I spend here. Okay. <laughs> so my Christmas vacation was uh, five weeks for four weeks. Actually, I took uh, I was off from the second week of December. Like I was I'm starting back uh, this next week. So the whole time I didn't leave my house to go anywhere. I didn't do anything. I didn't have any family stuff. I yeah. spent time cleaning and setting up aquariums and, you know, so it's it's uh, because we just moved here. There's a lot more to be done. Like, I feel like if if this has been going on for two years, then things would be more organized and I would just be doing routine maintenance. But. I'm not only doing routine maintenance right now, I'm still having to set up filters, I'm setting up new yeah. tanks. I'm, do you know what I mean? There's a lot more yes, to be yes, done. Yes, yes. And uh, so once it's all set up and all the tanks are where they're supposed to be, I think there'll be more time to do fun stuff. But uh, I haven't even been live streaming lately because I just uh, been so busy with this. And I, I try to explain this on the live stream. I don't think uh, I, I said it the, like, I don't know if, if people understood what I said because um, I was trying to explain a thought that was in my head. Basically, my, my, my thought is my animals here can't take care of themselves. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, I have yeah, to be here course. taking care of them. Uh, so I can't justify taking time from taking care of them to do something else uh, like showing them off when I haven't yeah. taken care of them properly. You know, so yeah, I think yeah, that's I my understand. main priority. Uh, and then once I have a better handle on taking care of them with this capacity, um, I think then I can be more free to, to do live streams and make more videos. And that's why I haven't been making a lot of videos because I don't feel right making a video of a tank when I know the fish in the tank is not at its best condition. So okay. if I would rather... I would rather spend that time cleaning the tank and making sure that fish is good before I would take the time to make that video. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, yes, yes, yes. Because so, you, you have a spent a lot of time to do videos too. It's, it's difficult. It's, it's not easy. Um, these lives, we, we, we only work in the life one hour, two hours. But when you work on videos to... <laughs> Editing videos to, to yeah to YouTube it's it's not easy. No, it's not no, it's a few hours of weird time. So yeah, um, yeah. And, and and I love doing it. I love yeah. I love making YouTube videos. Like, don't get me wrong, but um, I think I have to be first taking care of my fish before yeah. I do any of those things. And I think that's the most important thing uh, because if the fish are sick or dying there's no point in making videos you know yeah, yeah yeah so and thank god none of the fish are sick or dying but yeah, <laughs> yeah because but, i have uh, I, I have been I spending a lot you. of my time you know yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 i understand you malik could you tell us um how you let's talk about uh plecos yeah. what do you prefer when you when we talk about raising the fry what uh -huh. do you prefer? Do you have growing tanks? Do you have you prefer use uh, some fry keepers, some breather boxes? Yeah, what breather boxes. Like? Yeah, and that's my preference. Um, just do you use still? Of, no. Yes. Um, the, so space wise, it's a, it's easier to keep them in breeder boxes. Okay. Um, Oh, you were asking something. Do I use? Uh, yes, if you keep them uh, till uh, two or three centimeters, or and then you pass them to another tank, or 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 yes. you sell them before this, before they grow much so more. So, what I like to do is, um, I want to keep them in the breeder boxes until I sell them. Okay. Um, I sell them before they're three centimeters, around three centimeters, or okay. you know, right, okay. slightly before. Uh, I don't like to sell them before 2.5 centimeters. So I okay. grow them to 2.5 centimeters. Uh, this is mostly for zebra plecos uh, or L199 hyper ancestors types of fish. Uh, 2.5 centimeters. I keep them in the breeder box till they're that size. Then okay. anything I'm selling, I sell right out of the breeder box. Um, and if I'm going to keep the fish, then I move from there into a tank. Okay. Okay. I understand. And now, could you show us your zebra? 
L. Yeah, yes, 46, I'm going to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go up there. If the 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 Wi-Fi signal is a little weak, uh, ah, okay, I okay. But I think I think let's we, try it. Let's work. try it. Let's yeah, try it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and so yeah. it's it's. Uh, I think it works last time, so I think it will work. Yes, yes, yes. We we yeah. saw it perfectly. Yes. Before of this life. It's holding. Uh, signal is holding. But yes, I'm upstairs now on the third floor, and I'll give you guys a quick tour after. But um, okay. So this Fish. is the. Uh, uh, let's Sorry, let's yes. answer this fishy mic uh, question. I have Will a colony help, of twelve L one thirty four. Three are breeding size. I'd, should I separate them or should I just let them do this? No, I would leave them all together. Flacos yeah. seem to do better in groups, as you can see here. So I would leave all twelve fish together. Okay. So this is uh, one of my sub tanks. This is the main tank uh, that has a lot of breeding happening. It's very simple. Yeah. Uh, I have two of these filters. Uh, they're very basic, power head, sponge, okay. very basic filter. Uh, it's pushing current, one is pushing this way. This one is kind of falling apart right now. I had to fix it, but it's pushing that way from there. Okay, okay. So it rotates the water. Yeah. Um, there's an air stone. Uh, heater, um, Hamburg Matten filter. Yeah, yeah. And then I have my pH controller or measure pH measuring, and so that gives me a pH reading, uh, temperature, and the TDS. Okay, you have. Setting. Okay. Yeah, it's very straightforward. Very, very yeah. easy. Yeah. And you have a lot of uh, baby zips, <laughs> baby yes, yes. zebras here there. Okay. They stopped a lot. What are you? Can you hear me? Yep. No. Hi, Malik. <laughs> Bad connection. No. Can you? You stop. Well. Let's see if the connection restarts. Hi, Malik. Could you hear us? No. Hear me. There we are. Uh, okay. 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 Sorry, the the Wi-Fi yeah, failed. Yeah, yeah. It's it's difficult. It's difficult. Yeah, yeah. So I will uh, answer the questions from here. Uh, and, it's uh, better. We'll it's better. Yeah. So uh, I do have quite a bit of baby zebs. Yeah. Um, they are quite easy to breed. Actually, they're yeah. not difficult at all. Um. What I find the, the 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 things that I think are seem to be important when you're breeding zebs and other hype ancestors in general is the pH is quite important. Um, yeah. It's not the pH itself, but it's the calcium hardness in the water which affects the the pH. So uh, I like to run zero kH in my tanks, the breeding tanks, same as the discus tanks. The discus are bred in pure RO water uh, with like maybe 10% tap water. So 90%, 95% RO water, uh, very low TDS. TDS is maybe 20 parts per million, 30 parts uh, per million yeah. for the discus. But the zebs are bred in tap water. Uh, TDS is about 200 parts per million. Uh, the only difference is the zeb tanks, we like, to low, we like to keep the pH as low as possible. So I keep it between 5 and 6.5. Okay. So the lowest I will go is 5 or 4.9 because below that, um, your zebra placos can die at about 4.5 pH. Yeah, so yeah. I don't like to get close to that. I, I, I stay above five and I try to stay below 6.5 or six. Um, and okay. then nitrates we at zero. Yeah, we saw we saw um, a white bag in the center of your aqua. Could you explain? <laughs> yes, it's, it's actually resin, uh, aquarium yeah. resin. I actually have another bag here that I just bought. So I will show you guys what it looks like okay. before it goes in the aquarium. Uh, this stuff is from the water company. Okay. So this is. Uh, I'll try to see if I can get it to focus. Uh, let's let's see. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Let me change the camera angle and then. Okay, that okay. Back camera. There we go. Okay. All right. There we go. Okay. It's called 
anionic Anion. resin. So five pounds. Okay. This, this is from Water Company here in Canada. And um, you you use it in in, in the bag. Like uh, just put in the bag, it's okay. You clean it, you do something. Yes. So when this this stuff is right now, um, not ready to be used in aquarium. Okay. Uh, so, um, what you have to do because this is uh, it's coated. So these are little granules, like the okay, size of okay. Doctor Basilier, and okay. it has a little chemical coating in each granulate. Okay. Um, to keep it from drying out because if it dries out um the pro product goes bad so if, okay. if the the resin dries it's no longer good so if when you buy it first like this you will feel it's like gel okay okay so it, okay yeah it's very soft you know it's almost like gel you can squeeze it and everything okay um so you have to wash out the chemical coating uh, for 24 hours okay so and what we do is yeah and you have great results with um, the for breeding zebras, yeah. Oh yes, this stuff you can use for breeding discus fish. Too. Uh, you can use it for breeding zebs. You can use it for breeding L two thirty six. You can usually basically use it for anything, but we don't mm -hmm. really need to use it on our angelfish breeding tanks. Um, even the discus breeding tanks, we don't really need to use as much because we do water changes every day in the discus breeding tanks. Okay. Uh, with the zebra tank, we only do water changes once a week or once every five to seven days. So, and the zebs also seem to want the zero nitrates compared to like your discus don't really care about the nitrates. They will breed in higher nitrates. Um, not higher, but like 10 ppm of nitrate is not going to stop them from breeding. Where, where the zebs, I found the females are reluctant to lay eggs if the nitrate is too high. 10, 15 parts per million of nitrates, they just don't do it. They, they get trapped, but they, the female won't lay eggs. And okay, that's okay. when the females tend to get killed by the male because she refused to lay eggs and inside that they are trapped in a cave. She's waiting. He gets annoyed after two days and he could end up killing her. So yeah, this yeah. I found was, was really useful for that because if I have a trapping uh, and I notice that the female is there for 24 hours, I take one of these bags and I throw it in my tank like after cleaning and properly preparing it. And uh, within... 12 hours, she's already laid eggs, she's out of the cave. Well, it's, great it's tip. perfect. Yeah, yeah it's so perfect. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's really good to use. And also this stuff, you don't have to buy brand new ones every time. Um, you use it in your tank and then you take it out, that white bag you saw in my zebra, zebra yeah, paper yeah. tank, and uh, you can put it into salt water, um, non-iodized, like, you know, regular chlorine salt. And uh, you leave it for 24 hours, and all the nitrates come out of the bag, out of the resin, and into the salt. Okay. And then you can take the bag, wash it, and put it back in your tank. Yep. It's oh, like okay. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's Perfect. reusable. You can use it forever. Oh. Yeah. We have a, a question here from another friend from Portugal. Do you have Hi, Pedro. a pista? <laughs> uh, Pistogrammas. Right? Some epistogrammas. Uh, right now, we are not breeding any epistogrammas just because we don't have any pairs. Uh, okay. We have had different kinds in the past. Uh, I think the latest one we were trying recently was the McMastry. Um, so now uh, Michael is hunting for some McMastry red shoulders. Um, so when we get them, we will pick up a pair or two, probably three pairs, because we like to get at least three pairs uh, when we start a breeding project. Um, I personally like to get 12 fish if we can, but minimum six fish, you know. But right now we are not working on it uh, with any epistogrammas at the moment. But yeah. it's something we want to do in the future, you know. Oh, great. I, I could imagine your bill of electricity in your, in your house. <laughs> do you have any tips to economize electricity? Do you have, um, do, you, do you do anything special or? So... Uh, in terms of electricity, it's quite expensive here. Yeah. Um, we are spending two, three hundred dollars a month on average on electricity. Wow. Um, the one thing I recommend doing, especially if you're running a room or a, a basement, or you know, in our case, the whole house, yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, is to is to think about heating your house 
yeah. uh, instead of individual tanks. Yeah. So we're saving quite a bit of money by heating the house yeah. in terms of individual tanks. I mean, a lot of the tanks in the basement have heaters, but uh, those heaters not are not always on because okay. the, the basement is quite warm. Like I, I think you were saying you saw me working without a shirt on is because it's yeah, so hot yeah. that you can't work in here with your clothes with, with the shirt on and stuff. You're going to drench and sweat. So it's very warm in here. Um, I like to keep it at about 29 degrees Celsius, the whole house. So that helps uh, keep the, the fish comfortable, but I'm not comfortable. So, but it, it does save quite a bit of electricity because the house is warmer. Um, for example, the second floor and the third floor, there are no heaters running at all. So yeah. we, we save quite a bit of money because if I had heaters on the second and third floor, my electricity bill would be maybe $900, you know? Yeah, a month. yeah, it's a lot. So, so yes, you save quite a bit by heating the house. Um, the next thing I think you're going to save a lot of money on, I think Craig from Olivia and Dad's Fish Room talked about this on Facebook a few weeks back as well, is to run a central air pump. Yeah. So the whole living room is, is filtered with one air pump, and it's 87 watts for the air pump. And that's all the electricity that we use to filter all the tanks in the living room. The basement runs on one air pump, and that's like another 80 watts or something. Yeah, so yeah. the whole basement, all the filters, everything is run with 80 watts. The upstairs has two air pumps that are smaller, uh, and they're 40, uh, 40 gallons per hour, uh, our air pumps. And they're at about 45 watts each. So yeah. it, it, it saves a lot of money because we are using one central system to run everything uh, so we save quite a bit and especially in the summer uh, when uh, not in the summer but in the spring and the fall yes, our yeah. electricity bill is quite low because we are not spending a lot of uh, money on heaters or anything like this and also we're not spending a lot of money on uh, air pumps or yeah. like air like uh, filters yeah. so uh, it saves a lot that way and and LED lighting, you know, LED lighting is uh, very it's, cheap. It's good, yeah, yeah, yeah. And do you have some tips for who uh, are or want to start a small fish room uh, well, for the be <laughs> the beginning? Yeah, uh, you know, it, it's like if if somebody were to ask me if this is something I want to do for the rest of my life when I was younger, I would I would probably tell myself not to do it. <laughs> 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 so. Yeah. Um, but uh, the, the thing is, I think uh, what you want to do, especially yeah. if you're first starting a room, is start small. Yeah. Don't don't buy all the tanks. Like, I mean, I've made this mistake in the past. Uh, I remember when I was uh, 20 years old, um, I had maybe four tanks, five tanks, um, maybe about five or six tanks in total. And yeah. I want to expand. So I, I turned 20 and I said, I'm going to go pro. I want to expand. I got 75 new tanks. So I went from five tanks, six tanks to 75 yeah. tanks, like oh. overnight. The next day I have 75 new tanks. So then I spent all this money, you know, bought, got a credit card loan and bought the tanks, the equipment and everything. And then I was still going to school. Um, the one thing I noticed was I got very overwhelmed because I wasn't used to managing 75 aquariums. Yeah. I was yeah. used to managing six aquariums. So all of my systems, all my working ethic and my practices, everything I did was only for six tanks, so not for 75. So to adjust from six to 75 right away was a big adjustment. Um, and it took me a while to, to get things going. And, and, and for like almost a year, half of those tanks were not used. So my recommendation if you're gonna start is to start with one section of your room, one rack, yeah. you know, portion and then as you get used to that section and you maximize that section then move into a next section and start adding more tanks don't buy all the tanks and equipment because you're not going to use all of them right away you're not going to also be able to manage all that and you're going to get overwhelmed and i think that's where a lot of people quit is because they they take on too much yeah, and yeah. then it's like it's oh true. my god it's too much i can't do it and then they give up Three months, yeah. four months, you don't see any money. Three months, this is not something 
Michael always says, it's not something that's going to make you a millionaire. You know, breeding fish. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you might be able to pay their food expenses, the bills, the electricity, the rent, whatever. Uh, you might make a little bit extra money on top of it, which you are probably going to spend on more expensive fish. You know, <laughs> so you're always going to be poor <laughs> keeping fish. But but uh, it does, it, it can generate revenue. Um, it just takes time. It takes a lot of effort. It takes work. It takes dedication. It takes years to, to, to master your skills. So if you're starting out and you just have a small, you know, few tanks and you want to expand, get a few more tanks and, and expand, but don't get 50 more tanks from five yeah. tanks is, is my recommendation. You know what I mean? You can go to 50 tanks from 40 yeah. tanks or, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Start small, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Start yeah. small and grow, and, yeah. and and grow, grow gradually, small. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Malik, we are um, almost at the finish. Uh, we have mm -hmm. uh, reached one hour, <laughs> but I have two I questions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hi, buddy. <laughs> Whoa. Great Big friend. Brother. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have here two two last questions for you. To okay. I, I I I ask to all the guests that we are we are living in a in a fast world. Uh, do mm -hmm. you have do you see any future on the hobby with the, the evolution of the the social networks? Um, but, uh, so uh, I, I, this is something that is quite concerning to me um, because of what's happening. Uh, with uh, the the world's political atmosphere, uh, I feel like the World Economic Forum uh, agenda is to remove people from having animals. So there, in Canada, yeah. for example, they're talking about uh, going to people and and taking away our pets, our dogs and our cats and things like this yeah. to save the planet, like to save the planet, right? Crazy people. So um, I think it will be something that they will try to. To make it difficult i think in europe it's already difficult for people to keep fish yeah. and other pets because of the cost um i think that's going to be uh, something that we will have to overcome uh is, is is the expenses of keeping something like this because this is a hobby at the end of the day and uh, you know if you have to buy food or buy fish i think most people will buy food so i i think that's going to be a challenge for the hobby um, to adjust to the, the 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 situation that changes in the next five to ten years, but I think uh, we will figure it out because I know a lot of fish keepers in Europe that gave up fish keeping last year because it got so expensive are already starting back this year uh, now because they figured out a way to to make it work instead of spending so much on heating or electricity or something like this, you know. So. I think it will be fine. Uh, most people will figure out a way to keep their animals because if somebody tried to come and tell me I can't keep my dog, I will tell them to go to hell. <laughs> you know, I will yeah, tell them in, yeah. a, in a lot different words than that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Malik, if you have the, the chance to, to send a message to all the hobbyists, what do you like to say? Um, yeah. I, I would like to say uh, to all the hobbyists, uh, thank you so much for keeping fish. I think it's important, uh, not just for ourselves. I think uh, also for um, you know the animals that that live you know in different parts of the world that might uh, you know need that help. You know they they don't have habitat and stuff like that, like zebra pythons, for example. You know yeah. that we we are trying to. Um, you know the captive population we try to increase it and, and that might be helpful for that animal as a species so i think uh i'm very grateful for people to, for doing that you know taking uh time out of their lives and, and their money you know this is not something that pays back for a lot of people it's always an expense for everybody so um i i am very grateful for that and i think uh i, I want to say keep doing it don't give up you know keep breeding and keep growing and Keep keeping fish, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and be happy. <laughs> yes, and be happy. Yeah, yeah, Malik. Thank you so much for your time. Thank I, you, Tiago. Thank uh, you for yeah, having me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, it was a great pleasure. One hour thank with you. you. <laughs> so thank you. We'll do this more. So, uh, 
thank you to all that are watching us at this time yet <laughs> and, and so, i haven't uh, been able to get to the chat because uh, the chat option i had to click on it and then it stops the video so i'm sorry if i yeah, missed any of you on the chat uh, but uh, thank you for joining yeah and, uh, maybe we do uh, um, another life in the near future <laughs> definitely definitely okay. I, Malik, thank you. Thank you so much for, for yeah. everything. And and the next time when we do a live stream, we will look at your fish instead of me looking at Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes of one. course. <laughs> <laughs> a much, a much, much less aquariums, but of course. Of but course. it's much more interesting, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Okay, Malik, bye-bye. And thank you so uh, much. See, you, see you in in one life <laughs> in the okay. future. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.